Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC inside the N1F5. Now I'm really looking forward to today's build because I actually built my first PC inside an N1 case and N1 was the first company to actually send me out parts for a review and I'm really looking forward to seeing what N1 have been doing with their cases in between that first build and now. So let's take a look at the other parts I'm going to be building with today. For the motherboard, I'm going to be using the Z790 Aorus Elite X Wi-Fi 7. The CPU, I'm going to be using Intel's 14th Gen i9, the 14900K. Keeping our CPU cool, I've got a 360mm AIO from Inwin. It's the MR36. For RAM, I've got 32GB of Team Group's T-Force Delta RGB DDR5 at 6000 megatransfers per second. For storage, I'm going with a single Gen 4 NVMe drive from Lexer. It's their NM790 in 2TB capacity. Powering the whole build, I've got a 1000 watt fully modular Platinum ATX 3.0 power supply from Fantex. It's the Rule 1000 and I'm going to be using that together with their complete cable kit. And for the graphics card, I'm going to be using the RTX 4070 Aorus Master. Okay, that's all the parts. Let's make a start by taking a detailed look at the case. To remove our tempered glass panel, we simply need to pull it out from the back and then we can lift it forward and away. And our other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. Taking a look at the back of the panel we just removed, you'll notice there's no additional dust filters over these perforated areas at the top. Taking a look at our case's top I.O., we've got a power button, a combined headphone and microphone jack, we've got two USB Type-A ports and a single Type-C port. So we take a look at our case's front panel, it's actually made up of four individual panels. We've got one mesh panel which is going to serve as our intake and we've got these other three decorative panels. Now the top two panels you are able to swap about. They simply push off and then if you want you can move this one over to here and replace this one here. The mesh panel is pulled off in exactly the same way and you'll notice we've got no additional dust filters behind it although the mesh is pretty fine so this shouldn't be a problem. So you can see with the mesh panel removed we've got two 140mm PWM ARGB fans pre-installed at the front of the case. If you prefer it is possible to mount either two 120mm fans or a 240 or 280mm radiator at the front. We've got another 140mm PWM RGB fan at the rear. Again, if you prefer, you can mount a 120mm fan here. And we've got two more fan and radiator mounting locations in the case. There's the bottom of the case, and we've got this top bracket here. And on both of these places, you're going to be able to mount three 140 or 320mm fans, or up to a 360 or 420mm radiator. If you prefer to go with an air cooler, you'll be pleased to hear the maximum height supported is up to 180mm. In terms of motherboard support, as you'd expect with a full tower case, it does support motherboards up to EATX in size. And you can see, looking around here, we've got two sets of cutouts. These ones are for back connector motherboards, and we've got another set of standard cutouts down below. And we've got these large cutouts over towards the right-hand side of the motherboard, which there is rubber grommets in the case accessory box to cover these. The other thing that we're going to need to install is the standoffs for mounting our motherboard and these are included in the case accessory box together with a tool for installing the standoffs. So about half our standoffs went in nice and easy by hand. For the other ones we do get this standoff insertion and removal tool. I'll just pop it over the standoffs that haven't got in and then we'll screw them in with a screwdriver. So you can see in the box our case is set up for mounting your graphics card vertically. We've got these three vertical slots and great to see they're well away from the tempered glass panel. In terms of mounting your graphics card vertically, you're going to need to remove this bracket and then fix it to your graphics card outside the case before inserting the whole thing back in. So it is great that the vertical bracket comes with the case and if you do want to mount your graphics card vertically, the only additional thing you're going to have to pick up is a riser cable. If you prefer to mount your graphics card in the horizontal position, there is a spare expansion slot bracket so that you're going to simply slot back into place. So I just left the two out where my graphics card is going to go, but you do have enough of these slot covers if you want to cover them all up. So as you can see, in terms of graphics card support, it's absolutely massive, up to 435 millimeters. No matter if you install your graphics card vertically or horizontally, it is going to be well supported. We've got this nice magnetically attached GPU support bracket. Just need to loosen the thumb screw. You're then going to be able to slide this up to where it supports your graphics card and then tighten up the thumb screw. On the bottom of the case, we've got our one and only dust filter and it can be pulled out from the side for cleaning. Moving into the rear of the case, and you can see cable routine looks to be pretty good. And we've got absolutely loads of drive mounting here. So we've got these two dedicated two and a half inch drive mounting brackets here. They're each held on by the captive thumb screw. And when it's been loosened, you're simply going to be able to lift the bracket off. On the bracket then, you're simply going to be able to install your two and a half inch drive. Screw the drive in from the back using the screws from the case accessory box. And then you can return the bracket to the case. 
We have another two drive mounted brackets behind our motherboard and on each of these brackets you're going to be able to mount two two and a half inch drives or a single three and a half inch drive and we've got loads of velcro straps and cable ties in the case accessory box. Your power supply is going to go at the top here and the case is compatible with full size ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 230 millimeters. So if you do want to install fans and radiators on this bracket they're going to sit on the front of the bracket in the main body of the case but if you put your power supply in first you're not going to have access to these screw holes so make sure you install either fans or radiators on this bracket if that's what you want to do before installing your power supply. So you notice we've got this large cutout here and this is for the tubes of your IIO so you're going to install it with the tubes facing in towards the back of the case and then route the tubes down here towards your motherboard. Okay, last thing to do in terms of preparing our case is to add the extension cables in for both ARGB and PWM for our case fans. So all we need to do is plug our PWM extension cable into the PWM cable and that's going to give us a nice long cable which should reach our motherboard okay. And then in terms of our ARGB we just need to remove the plastic protection and then just slide this onto our ARGB cable. And then we're going to be able to plug this into our motherboard. And then we'll do the same thing with our rear case fan. We're now ready to start working on the motherboard and we're going to be installing our CPU, the backplate for our CPU cooler, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before inserting the motherboard into the case. To open the socket cover we need to push this lever down and out and bring it all the way to the top of the motherboard and then we're going to be able to open the socket cover up. We can then lower our CPU down into the socket, line it up with the notches at the top and at the bottom. We've got a little wiggle from side to side just to check it's seating correctly and once it is we can go ahead and close the socket cover. If we apply a little bit of pressure here the black bit of plastic will pop off and we'll put it in the motherboard box for safekeeping and then we can go ahead and close our socket cover to secure the CPU. We're going to be installing our M.2 SSD in the top heatsink so to free the heatsink up we need to push this lever upwards and then we're going to be able to lift the heatsink up and away. There's some plastic protection on the heat pad that we're going to need to remove and we've also got some plastic protection on the back of the heatsink. We can then insert our M.2 SSD into the socket and flatten it down and as we do this little clip will close holding our drive in place and then all we need to do is replace our heatsink. We're going to install our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU so we'll open the clips on these slots. Then we can line our RAM up with the slot and once we're happy everything's lined up some firm pressure and it's going to clip into place. Next thing to do is install the backplate for our CPU cutter and we're going to need the one labelled LGA 1700. We do have some double sided adhesive here, I'm just doing a temporary build so I'm not going to use this but if you do want to use it just peel off the paper here. And then all we're going to need to do is line the back plate up with the holes in the back of our motherboard. And then we're going to use the bag of thumb screws labeled LGA1700 and screw one of these onto each corner. We can then set the motherboard into the case, lining it up with the standoffs at the back, and then we'll secure it into place with nine of the large screws from the case accessory bag. Next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in. Our HD audio cable is going to go to this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So we can bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push into place. We've got two ARGB headers down at the bottom. I'm going to bring the ARGB cables coming from our case fans through and get them plugged in. And then we've got some system fan headers here so we'll plug our case fans into these. And then our front panel connectors are going to go into the left hand side of this header here. So we'll bring our cable through and we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing up the way. And then we'll put all the excess cable through to the back. Our front panel type C cable is going to go into this header here so we can bring our cable through the cutout line it up with the header and push into place. Just above it we've got our USB 3.0 cable so we'll bring the cable through the cutout and push into place and then again we'll just put all the excess cable through to the back. So we're now ready to start working our I.O. and we're going to be installing the fans on the opposite side of the radio that we normally install them on. So the tubes are facing down the way and we're actually going to be installing them on the side of the radiator that doesn't have the tubes coming from it. So this is our pump, it's built into the radiator and the cable coming from the pump is going to be running towards the bottom of the radiator when we have it installed in the case and here it's going to be on display what we can actually do is just pull it out from this little notch and if we bring it around this way it's now going to be up towards the top of the case where we're not going to be able to see it and then I can set the fans onto the radiator we can then secure the fans into place with the long radiator screws that came with the I.O. So next thing for us to do is to daisy chain the ARGB and PWM cables together. So we can remove the plastic protection for this ARGB cable. We'll take the ARGB cable coming from our next fan 
line it up and push into place. And then we'll pull the plastic protection off the daisy chainable connector coming from it and plug our last fan into it. Same thing with our PWM connectors. We'll plug one into here and daisy chain the next fan into it. We get a long PWM and ARGB cable with our AIO. So we can take our ARGB extension cable and plug it into the last fan's ARGB cable. Same thing with our PWM extension cable, we'll get it plugged in. Next we need to install the bracket on the water block, so it's just a matter of lining the Intel bracket up and then just pushing it into place. Next we can set our AIO into place at the top of the case. So I'm just going to pass our tubes through this cutout, pass all the fan cables through to the back, and then we can line the AIO up on the bracket. And we can then secure everything into place using the short radiator screws at the top. We can then add some thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. It is included with the AIO. We need to remove the plastic protection from the coal plate. And I just like to wrap our ARGB cable up around here. And then we just need to line things up with the bracket we've already installed to the motherboard. And we're going to want to get a thumb screw onto each corner. And then we just need to tighten each corner up in turn. At the top of the case we've got an ARGB header, so I'm just going to plug the ARGB header coming from the water block into here. And it has a daisy chainable connector. It's not going to fit through behind the motherboard, but we can bring it to the side and pass it through the cutout to the back. And I'm just going to then pass all our excess cable through to the back. Next to our ARGB cable we've got our CPU fan header, so I'm going to bring the cable coming from our fans through and get it plugged into here. And the header furthest to the left is our CPU opt header, so I'm going to plug the cable coming from our pump into it. And then at the back of the case, all we need to do is plug the RGB cable coming from our fans into the splitter cable coming from our water block. And you can see the reason I've gone with this orientation, I want to make sure that our tubes aren't obstructing our RAM. Now you'll see our Inman logo is upside down. To get it around the right way, it's just a simple matter of twisting it round. Into our power supply, I've plugged a 24-pin cable, two 8-pin DPS cables, and a 12-volt high power cable. So we can then slide our power supply into place at the top. And importantly, we're going to want to make sure the power supply's intake fan is facing out the way. And we can secure the power supply into place using four of the same screws we used to secure our motherboard. The power supply has a hybrid fan mode, so whenever the power supply is under low load, the fan stops spinning. And to turn this on, we want to have this button here in the outer position. So obviously one of the things I was a little bit concerned about this type of orientation is our power supply is going to potentially blocking part of the radiator and the hot air from the radiator is going to come up against the back of the power supply. One of the good things about our power supply is our intake fan is still going to be getting cool air from outside the case. And our power supply isn't right up against the radiator so I am able to just about fit my hand in between the power supply and the radiator. So we have got a large cutout here, so whenever I'm routing the power supply cables through to the front of the case, I'm going to make sure to pass them through this cutout. So the two 8-pin EPS cables are going to go into these headers here, so we'll get them plugged in. And our 24-pin cable is going to go into this header here, so we'll bring it through the rubber grommet, line it up with the header, and push into place. And then we'll just tidy up the cables with the included cable combs. We're now ready to install our graphics card, so we can open the clip in the top PCIe slot. We can then line our graphics card up with the slot, and once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure, and it will clip into place. And we can secure it into place using two screws. We can then bring our 12 volt high power cable through the cutout at the bottom, line it up with our graphics card, and push into place. And then we'll organise the cable with the included cable combs. Then we can take our GPU support bracket, set it into place, Push it up to where it is providing support for our graphics card and then tighten the little thumb screw. And importantly, we're just going to check the fans to make sure they're not catching on the bracket. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management to get the panels back on again.
Okay, so that's the build complete. If you don't know how to set the PC up, including installing Windows, the drivers, the RGB software, entry in the BAS, update in the BAS, and just in all the BAS settings, I've made another video that covers all of that, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. So in terms of our temperatures, our i9-14900K idled at 31 degrees and reached a maximum of 102 degrees during a 10 minute out of 64 stability test. During that test, there was up to 7% thermal throttling. Our RTX 4070 idled at 27 degrees and reached a maximum of 51 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise, we had average noise levels of 35 decibels at idle and 49 decibels under load. So in terms of building the case, it was a pretty easy case to build in being such a large size. There is a few important things to remember. I think the most important thing is don't be installing your power supply until you've installed your radiator at the top of the case. You need to screw the radiator in from the side and obviously your power supply is there. You're not gonna be able to do that. Another important thing to mention, we do have that cutout at the top of the case and it is important to pass all your cables through that so you're not gonna have any difficulty getting the side panel back on again. One potential issue you might have is with your cable length and this comes from the fact that your power supply is all the way at the top of the case and the 12 volt high power cable routing its way down to the graphics card is quite tight on both ends and there really isn't any cable length to spare. So if you do have a shorter cable with your power supply, you might actually struggle to reach your graphics card and you may actually need to bring it in further up and bring it over the top of the graphics card. The only other potential issue you might have with your power supply been installed all the way at the top is the cable going to the wall. At the moment, the cable that I've got plugged in here, because it is such a large case, is literally sitting on the floor and there's no spare cable. So if you have pre-rooted all your cables on your desk and normally your power supply is at the bottom, you are gonna need a significantly longer cable to reach all the way to the top of this case. So moving on to the things I liked about the case and this is a good looking case with a high build quality throughout. And I really love the fact that you can install your graphics card vertically or horizontally with the bracket included to do that. The major thing that I think I like about this case is the design. I love the fact that you can have your AI at the top with a good side of it on display and actually the tubes coming from it are pretty hidden so you get a really clean look at your RAM and your graphics card and your build without AIO cables stretching over everything. But like with everything there is pros and cons, the big advantage of this sort of design is the aesthetics and having that quite unusual build with your AIO fans on display at the top of the case which looks really good. Um, downside is it may have some effects on the temperatures but actually what I tested the temperatures were very similar to what I've got in other builds. Other things maybe to mention in terms of things I wasn't a big fan of, I would have liked to have seen a few more dust filters, um, particularly towards the top and back of the case. And the final thing that I found a little bit frustrating was having to install the rubber grommets, standoffs and fan extension cables myself, and I would much rather they came installed out of the box. So putting everything together, I have been impressed with the N1 F5. I think the build I put together is stunning and the design choices that n have gone with work really well in terms of aesthetics. So if you are in the market for a large, good looking case with a good build quality, I can definitely recommend this one. And it has been really nice to get another in-win build on the channel after a number of years. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.